hello, hello. Uh, this is uh, this is basically my second big day's riding um, in in Mexico um, from uh, Veracruz to uh, City de, de, de la Carmen, when, uh, which which is a like it's an old port city. Um, also, a fishing village used to be a big pool. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, pearls, oysters, all that sort of stuff, and uh, it's fairly big with energy, and it's trying to transform itself into a um, into a tourist destination, and it's it's quite a pretty place. Um, uh, but today was a pretty big, big long ride. It was um, it was about just over nine hours of riding, of riding, stopping, etc. You know, about six hundred and sixty k's, about four hundred miles. Uh, mostly pretty good roads. I did, I did try to get a little bit clever at one stage, and because uh, I usually have, and I, it's a good thing to have. I mean, GPS pretty much covers everything for you. However, uh, actual maps, the paper maps, it's a lot clearer to see um, and to work out uh, off roads. Well, I thought it was. Um, and I decided to venture a little bit off road. It was only about a 30 kilometer trip between two and as you can see I've reached a dead end <laughs> um, and uh, <coughs> it was only about a 30 kilometer and as the road swept around this went through a little bit of a uh, little bit of a, a forest and uh, it was like it's like the Everglades back in in Miami it was similar to that but it was a dirt track and it was going great for for a while and uh, and then I got to a dead end and I, I was I walked up and down thinking, well, maybe it opens up again, but nothing. And I then looked at the map thinking, well, how come it says it connects? Um, well, it's sort of connected, but it was through a through part of the, of the national park. Um, and well, it didn't connect. Um, so then I had to basically make way, my way back, but it wasn't that, that big a stretch to do. Um, well, I didn't even get 30 kilometres in. The, the, the trip was from one point to the other was 30 kilometres. I think I got about 10 to 15 k's in there. The road was really good. It was fun. You know, it had a little bit of loose stuff on the top, so you could give it a bit of a tail on the as you went round the uh, went round the corners. You could have a bit of fun, and uh, but it, you know, it held solid after that. Um, but today's ride was I, I really enjoyed it, um, even though it was nine hours. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> a lot of bridges, and you can see a lot of wetlands, low-lying areas, wetlands. A lot of bridges. I love going over bridges, especially the old ones. You know, um, not so much when it's really busy the traffic, but when, uh, when when you're in the middle of nowhere and you're going over a bridge, you can stop and get some good photos, have a rest there. You know, you've got one or two cars. As long as you, as long as you're fairly smart where you where you actually do stop. Um, and uh, yeah, my biggest foe on this trip on the road was not cars, it was not trucks, it was buses. Um, and it just, you know, they, they'll have on the back that, you know, eight, limited to 80 or something like that, but they're doing 120, 130 kilometers an hour, you know, 80, 90 miles an hour. And they're just freaking crazy. I mean, I, I, I've said it to a few people, I would never get a bus. I mean, more people get killed in buses, I, I would imagine than in, in any other type of vehicle. I mean, even in Peru over the Christmas period, like 40 people died. And when you when you think, oh, well, you know, that's a tragedy, and, and of course it is. But when you see the way that people drive their buses, you just think, you know, you just think, well, it's bound to happen. Um, they go around blind corners on, on the other outside, tooting their horn. Um, they overtake near corners. Um, it's just madness, and the, the reason for it is is that all of all of the bus drivers and the companies make money from the people they pick up, so they're always trying to get there first before other buses. So it's a big competition to get there quickly, because they're all around the same price. Um, and but it's just madness. And this part this part of the trip was pretty painful because there's a fair bit of road work going on, and also this bus actually ended up trying to overtake me again. Um, I just started cooling, uh, settling down, and just going for a nice stroll, and um, and uh, it overtook me. But this part of the, uh, uh, the because it's a fairly big energy place, uh, a city down to Carmen, there was quite a lot of trucks trucks on the road, so that sort of took a lot, took off the gloss a little bit. 
Um, and then not only that, we had there was an accident um, and we were backed up for for miles. And basically, I, I worked out how to do it, to, how to get it to do a detour and get uh, and go through this town and then work my way around. But that took a, that took an extra hour as well. Um, but there are things. I mean, I had to go back the other way on the freeway uh, until I could find a uh, find an exit point because uh, they said it'll be three to four hours. It must have been a pretty bad accident. So I ended up going through this town, and then it ended up raining, and um, and uh, yeah, it was it was it was a pretty, pretty miserable little side trip. It would have been a good here, here is this little town that I was going through. It wasn't that small, but. Um, And Google Maps doesn't really work that well in these sort of towns, so you've got to go by sight most of the time and try to work your way, your way around. I mean, the Google Maps, the roads are there on the maps, but the one-way streets, because a lot of these towns have one-ways, so you've got to sort of work your way around. So I just basically picked a point, um, put my compass on my on my phone, and you get like this sort of stuff as well. <laughs> just in the middle of nowhere, just all, all of a sudden we've just decided to start putting rocks on the road. Um, but you know, I mean, I, these sort of things you, you can either get get pissed off about them, or you just get on with it. The rain, for, for an, any venture rider, will tell you, uh, rain and wind are probably the two worst enemies when you're when you're riding on an adventure. Um, rain, I, I, wind, <coughs> wind, you can handle most winds. There was a couple of times on my trip. The wind was just so unbelievable. You, you, you. I couldn't keep the bike on one side of the road at one stage. No matter what I tried to do, it just blew me over the other side of the road. And uh, luckily, it, there was no cars or anything there because I, I would have just had to ditch it um, if there was because I just couldn't hold the bike. I was put. I was leaning, basically nearly leaning sideways into the wind, trying to keep the bike upright, and it just went off. But. I would imagine having rain and wind, um, rain and wind at that extreme would just be nearly impossible. You'd just come off your bike, you just have to um, stop. Um, <coughs> you know, people say, oh, a heavier bike is better, but I mean, with my bike, there's a lot more surface area for the, for the, uh, for the, the wind to hit, and you know, I'm packed pretty tight, so it's uh, freaking dogs. Um, that's another enemy you're going to find out about if you're going on an adventure, especially through towns like this. Um, maybe because it's raining, dogs weren't interested, so I didn't have any problems in this town. But um, yeah, dogs will just come out of nowhere and just have a have a crack at your leg. I find I found that the best the best uh, thing for me was to stop, just to stop dead. You know, unless it was a massive pack. Um, there's two criteria basically. If you if you're on a rough road and, and speeding is not an option, and which which a lot of through the a lot of the little towns, it's a lot of dirt and not very even and pretty rough. So the option to just speed away sometimes isn't there. So most of the time I just stopped dead and the dogs just stopped and just looked at me like, what are you doing? You know this is not this is not the deal we we signed up for. The deal is you kick out at us and we try to bite your leg. Um, so I, when I decided to do that, that was only, if I had a good flat road and a, and a good line of sight and it wasn't heavy traffic and it wasn't dangerous, I'd just gun it um, and you know, I'm obviously going to outrun a dog. But um, the other method is just to stop dead and they'll just stop not knowing what to do and they'll just look at you and then once they're stopped and they you know, don't wait a minute or two and they'll just sort of lose interest then you just speed away. Um, gas stops, you know, most of the time these are all pretty good and um, you just got to make sure that you get the get the premium stuff as much as you possibly can, especially if you've got a decent, a newer bike. Um, it's just not going to work out very well for you if you don't. Um, you see a lot of this through Mexico and uh, a lot of the uh, countries, a lot of armed forces just driving on the roads. But you know, this this was the same town. It just it just got dry at one end of it, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so 
the, the, the trip here was to get to Sydney down to Car Del Carmen and then and then from there I was going to spend a night or two there and then uh, and then get to Shetamal which is on pretty near, much near the border of Belize. Um, but I was going to stay, if I could get a decent place and some decent internet, I was going to stay a few days and I ended up doing that in Chetamal. Um, I got a really good hostel, it was fantastic. Uh, little swimming pool, it was, from the outside it didn't look much, but once you went inside it had a beautiful area upstairs for sitting, you could relax in hammocks and, um, and I, you know, <coughs> as I said in previous videos, you can dorm it, which means going to a hostel and staying in the dorm, but you risk it. Nearly all the bad stories I heard from people on the road were other other tourists stealing stuff off them, or well, one guy, one guy I met actually in Chenimal had somebody uh, threw water on his laptop because he fell asleep and left it on. And uh, apparently he, he said he, he snores, which most people do, uh, or a lot of people do anyway, from my experience, I know I do. Um, but it all depends which way I'm sleeping. If I'm sleeping on the side, I don't, but if I'm sleeping on the back or the side back, I do. But um, yeah, somebody just just ruined his, like he had a, um, uh, one of those uh, Dell uh, Dell computers, but the, you know, the high-end version, I can't remember what they're called. Um, but they're, yeah, and somebody just ruined it, you know? Um, and then there's other people who had their money stolen, you know what I mean? <coughs> You're a little bit to blame in, in, in that respect. Like if, if I was to sleep in a dorm, I'd have a money belt and I'd sleep with that on. Um, so that, you know, if someone was gonna do something, they'd have to touch, you know, touch my body. Um, but with, with the motorbike gear, you can't stay in dorms because you've got all your, you know, they, they give you a locker. And you'd, I'd need like six, seven, eight, nine lockers to put all my crap in um, and just to secure it. Uh, so private room is, doesn't mean you're not going to get knocked over in a private room, but it, it makes it less likely. Um, and even private dorms, you know, you're paying 20, 25, you know, might pay 30, 40 dollars a night, depending on where you're staying. What if it's a pretty big tourist place? Maybe a little bit more. Um, but I found that uh, you know most of the time I was paying about 25 for a private dorm room, uh, 25, 30, and that, yeah, that's perfect, you know. Um, <coughs> The hostels are getting a lot better. The one in Chetamal had really good Wi-Fi. Well, really good Wi-Fi for the trip, you know, maybe 20 megabytes a second download, four or five megabytes a second upload, which is acceptable. It's, I mean, it's not high speed. I think the minimum is 25 megabytes a second to be defined by the FDA, uh, the FCC or whatever they call it here in the US, to define as, uh, as high speed. Um, you'll find every single hotel says they have, they have high speed internet and they don't. Um, you, you, some of most of them three to four megabytes a second uh, download, and which is enough to watch a YouTube video, uh, <coughs> and then l less than one megabyte a second upload, which basically means you're um, you can't really upload anything at that speed. I mean, I used to upload my photos, and then whenever I got a good place, I'd upload any of the videos I have, but that was very rare. In the, I mean, I had. By the time I got to Santiago, I had like 600 gigabytes of videos I had to upload. So, <clears throat> I'm going to get better at this. Like, I would, I would rather be on the road commentating and then just, uh, just do that that way. But my problem was my drift ghost was not was playing up, um, and I couldn't get any any microphone to work with it. Uh, it ended up once I got to Cartagena, I ended up getting three microphones directly from Ghost. Uh, from drift and they worked they work perfectly um, which which means that there's something about them that just doesn't work with any other microphone jack which is freaking annoying and not very good from their point of view uh, maybe they didn't do it deliberately but it feels that way um, uh, yeah and then I then I you know started doing some commentary but my next trip whenever I do it will be I'm gonna just basically just get better at doing the uh, the cutting so start finish and then just upload the video because uh, it saves a lot more time than having to do it edit, edit afterwards um, so I suggest if you're going to be going to go and do adventure riding and you want to help people understand it and, and learn about the trip is to is to learn before you go 
how to do all that sort of stuff. I mean, I, I, I sort of know how to do it, but just unfortunately technology let me down. And, you know, I tried the, I tried the GoPro with the Cena uh, thing on the back of it, and it just wouldn't pick it up. It just wouldn't work with it. And it just got super frustrating. So I just ditched that and bought a, bought a Drift. Um, probably a better move anyway, because the, the GoPro, whilst it probably has better better uh, image quality, it's a large file size, plus you've got to go through that ridiculous setup. And how GoPro haven't amended that to, you know, there's, there's certain things that really annoy me about the technology with the, with the, uh, with the action cameras, you know. I don't know why we, you can't hook into your microphone on, on like I've got a Euclid digital speaker system and uh, uh, comm system. Uh, why they? Why you can't hook into that and just just record from that? Because I can make a phone call and people can hear me clearly if I'm not moving, or I, don't, I have my face mask up. Um, yeah, so you get a lot of this as well, which a lot of like, little security checkpoints. Um, I don't know why they have. I mean, security. If if you're worried about drugs and and stuff like that, I, I would think that having surprise ones and mobile ones would be so much so much better because from the people that I spoke to is the the, the druggies the, the people who are smuggling all know where all this shit is you know so you know they just avoid all that stuff you know um, and you know they're always going to be one step ahead anyway so I mean I just don't even know that know the point of even having a drug enforcement of any kind I just think it's silly it just creates a big market for for people who want to do to uh, do that stuff and you know it just bores me it basically means everyone else has to pay and you know we've got to wait in time and we've got to get stopped all the time and stuff like that um, and they're gonna it's gonna get through anyway you know you, I, 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 I can recall so many times I've watched the news and the the drug enforcement have said this is going to put a major dent in the drug you know this has been happening for 20 30 years it's just it's silly um, but yeah so <coughs> These are the roads I love, you know, the little one, uh, little one track, uh, sorry, one track each way, um, uh, bitumen roads, going through town after town, I prefer this so much more than than uh, going on highways, because you get to see so much and you can stop in so many places and get a little bite to eat. I ended up stopping here and and, uh, and having a little sit down. Uh, so that was, uh, Get a nice spot and just have a little bit of a sit down, and it's pretty cool. So anyway, I got back on the road again. I sat, there, I stayed there for about 10, 15 minutes actually, and then right next to it there's a little shop, and we went got a drink and just relaxed for like 10, 15 minutes, and then get back on the road. But this is, I mean, you'll find this is a look at all the speed ups. Uh, this is the perfect type of riding, you know, like it's just nice and you know 40 50 kilometers an hour 30 mile an hour just taking your time going through it's so much so much fun and you stop in places and people say hello and all that sort of stuff you just got to be very wary of the topes the speed humps because they do pop up on you um, I'm trying to overtake this truck now I think I don't like sitting behind trucks very much you know um, it's okay in certain situations but yeah, you get past him and you just go over tope after tope when you get near the towns. And the thing that's hard <coughs> is that they're all different sizes. Some of them are marked and have got colours on them, and others are just all. Um, I think I think maybe here this is the area where I <laughs> going to be crazy, here. but I my my bag I've got these uh, these um, Subtech sports bags. And one of them, there's people waving at me all the time and going, hey, like, and I was like, hey. And then I just realised that one of my bags, because of all the speed humps I was going over, I was basically going over one every 100 metres, you know, you can see me jumping up and down. Um, and, uh, and one of my bags had come off the side and was just dragging on the on the bitch of it, I don't know how long for. But um, then, the, the, amazingly, the bag was fine. There was no damage to it. Um, I've got to say, I really love those bags. They're, you know, they're, they're th the Subtech uh, sports bag, and I'm going to do a review on them uh, later on. Although they're a little bit big for my bike, I wish they'd make a, the only thing I complain about make is for them to make a smaller version. 
uh, of them. But um, but for a motorcycle uh, bag, to check, they're 100% waterproof. They're easy to open. Um, they float as well. You've got an air, air, so they've got some cushioning in them. So if you want to put your computers or uh, photograph, if you can actually blow them up, and they've got a they've got a, a, a padding in the bottom of them. And um, this is where I see I found my bag on the side to reattach my bag, and that was a bit of a screw up. Um, but um, I just, you know, I just absolutely love the bags. You know, if they were probably about. 30 that made a 30 percent smaller version of them um then they would just be friggin' awesome um uh yeah i mean i've tried different bags and stuff like that and nothing works like these these are they're, they're quite a, a high price but even i even had um i even had a drone and um and you know i went i went swimming with the drone inside the bag i went snorkeling and uh to find a good spot for the drone to, to take off at a beach and to swim across to an island in my snorkel gear and I had the bag above me and I just launched it from the island and went out to the boat and it was great footage and um, yeah and the bag just you just blew the bag up a little bit more and it just floated it floated anyway but um, blew the bag up the drone was completely dry I could I could put the bag under the water and it wouldn't get any water in it it was yeah, fantastic bags premium pricing about three hundred ninety nine dollars each. But well worth it if you think about a whole trip. Um, you know th these things still come back perfect at the end of it. Um, so I highly recommend. They're called Subject Sports. They're, they're a European company. Uh, but I'm going to do a full review on it. I'm basically going to do a review on all of the gear that I used and what I thought about it at the start and what was the, what they were like at the end. Uh, and I'm looking forward to doing that for everyone because. Uh, some of the stuff I, I used was sensational. Some of it was not so much. Um, some of them lasted the whole trip until the, the last day. <laughs> well, just one, one thing did. So, um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to, to, to doing that. Um, so my next trip, my next trip's going to be uh, into Shedemul, and uh, and that's where that's my last stop in Mexico. Which you know I was pretty. I was looking forward to moving into different countries and stuff like that, but I was also going to be pretty sad to leave Mexico. It's, uh, well, I'll, I'll talk about it in the next video, but by jingoes, it's a fantastic place. Um, and number one recommendation for anything, if you're going to go to Central America, go through Mexico. Just don't miss it. You, you'll just, you'll never regret it. You just stick by a few rules, and that's the same anywhere. I was talking about it with some guys last night. Is that. If you just if you want to go out at night and go into dangerous areas, like I've been to slums in cities that are apparently some of the most dangerous places in the world, and there's kids playing in the street during the day, everything's fine. But if you want to go there at night and start drinking, or if you want to be start dealing drugs or something like that, and you know you're, you're going to get knocked over, you know. But that was the same thing would happen to you in in somewhere like um, the same thing would happen to you if you did that in Chicago or, or one of any of the other cities that have got some pretty dangerous areas. It's just a matter of percentages. You do it once, you'll probably get away with it. Do it twice, you do it 50 times, you might get away with it. Just one time, you'll get done. And it's the same. It's the same risk with you know all the people I saw that would overtake people near corners. You'll get away with it 999 times, but you only have to get killed once, you know, uh, or kill somebody else for that matter. It's, you know, I've got a few pet hates on the road. I hate people who tailgate, like sit right on the ass. And spit. In three towns, it's fine, but when you, when, and you shouldn't stick on someone's ass anyway, through a town, 30, 40 metres behind them, that's fine. You're not going to get there any quicker. But um, people on highways who tailgate, I mean, they're just, they're just ridiculous. All they're going to do is kill somebody at some stage or kill themselves. You know, a lot of times I'll overtake somebody and they've been tailgating somebody else and I'm looking at them, there's like three kids in the back, the person in the front, the guy or the girl in the front is talking on the phone. It's just insanity, you know, and they're not, that's, there's no skill in that. It's just stupidity. You know, you're basically a potential murderer as far as I'm concerned. Um, and you've got no chance of stopping if anything happens, you know. Um, and nearly all the accidents I saw was, was, was on the trip were people just being stupid, you know? Um, I saw, you know, I probably saw four or five accidents on the trip, a couple of fatalities, um, and it was always someone doing something stupid. Um, and, you know, 
why? To save like a minute, to get there a minute earlier, just stupid. But anyway, this is now, uh, this is City Dad Del Carmen. Um, pretty good place, I stayed in a really, I got there fairly late, and uh, this was about 7, 7.30 p.m. at night. And then by the time I settled down, like the kitchen had closed, but the the, the host at the place was really cool and, and let me, um, let me, uh, uh, they made me dinner even after the kitchen was closed and um, it was really good. But this is a typical sort of city in Mexico. Uh, and then you get to the Malacom, which is a waterfront, which I'm, we're coming up to now. And it's really nice. They're, they're, doing, they're trying to do this up um, to, to make it really cool and it's uh, it's coming along nicely. That's the, there's the Azul, that's the place I stayed at. Um, it was $25, $30 for the night. <laughs> I had my own private room, it's not, it's a hotel. Um, parking out the, in the rear. Guy opens it up for me. Easy peasy, Japanesey. So there I go. So thanks very much for listening, and uh, that's one of my rooms on the right there. And we'll, we'll chat again soon. Questions or comments, uh, leave them below. That was my room on the right, uh, and we'll talk soon. Thanks, guys.